Good afternoon. Um, my name is Olaf Bärenfinger, and I will walk you through this presentation. Uh, welcome also to this session, training students for a multilingual and multicultural world. Um, as you probably all know, the Arcus University Consortium comprises seven action lines. And um, today I want to give you some information on the actions we have taken in work package for the multilingual and multicultural university. And of course, we will also have enough time to discuss or if you've got any questions, just um, tell me and uh, I'll get back to you. Um, <clears throat> before I start with reporting on what we did, I would like to give you some conceptual background. Um, you probably all know the common European framework of reference, probably the most important document on language policy worldwide. And in this document, multilingualism is really at the core of the European language policy. Um, <clears throat> here I have two quotes from the companion volume. This is a recent publication um, in relation to the Common European Framework of, uh, of Reference. And it says here, <clears throat> the provision of common reference points is subsidiary to the SEFRA's main aim of facilitating quality in language education and promoting a Europe of open-minded pl plurilingual citizens. So we have two important elements here. We have quality in language education, which serves as a means to promote plurilingual citizens, citizens that are open-minded. Uh, the second quote um, highlights this from another angle. Seeing learners as plurilingual, pluricultural beings means allowing them to use all their linguistic resources when necessary, encouraging them to see similarities and regularities as well as differences between languages and cultures. So this is a kind of definition of what it means to be plurilingual and pluricultural. And as I was saying before, this is really um, the overarching aim of the European language policy. When we started the Arcus Alliance, uh, we asked ourselves, what does this vision of um, a multilingual, pluricultural citizen mean in the context of higher education? And uh, in action line four, we came up with um, specific measures. We call them work packages. Uh, and by um, using or re relying on these um, measures, we want to address uh, the issue of uh, promoting multilingualism and pluriculturalism in our partner universities. The first work package um, is creating an ARCUS charter on language policy. Here we try to um, to achieve common ground amongst the partners about the role of language in higher education in our universities. For instance, uh, regarding entry requirements, regarding uh, competence levels um, we want to see uh, in our students or in our staff, or also in mobility. This Arcus Charter on Language Policy is that you can think of it as a kind of central document which guides all actions and measures regarding language policies at the partner universities. Related to this work package is work package two, a symposium on language policy. Um, we had to reschedule it due to the corona crisis and it will take place in September this year in Vilnius. Um, and in this context, we want to discuss uh, the 
ARCUS language policy charter. And of course, we also want to invite uh, external expertise and um, yeah, um, gear the discussion on language policy in higher education in general. And of course, there will also be a publication of the charter as well as um, the presentations um, in relation to the document. Um, before I was talking about competence levels, we want to see in our staff, not only teaching staff, but also administrative staff. And um, of course, there's always a gap bit what, between uh, what you want to have and what you actually have. And uh, so we uh, decided it is really vital to this action line to create a joint strategy to, um, to develop our staff a little bit more towards this idea of uh, European citizenship in terms of language policy. And um, I think the uh, added value here is that we don't do it on our own, but um, that we do it with our partners and that we see this task in a European context. When we talk about training our staff, um, we also have to think about certifying related um, competences. And this is uh, the um, the fourth, um, the fourth um, work package, uh, we want to establish a system, um, a system of certificates, um, which show which level of competence a staff member has achieved, either um, language wise or culture wise. Um, as you will see later, all of the partners have a huge amount of resources, a huge amount of language modules and courses on their own. And here again, the idea is sharing these resources, sharing courses, making them accessible to the partner students. And this is um, work package five. And the next two work packages are related to mobility. And um, here, um, the first idea is with sending students to local schools, for instance, um, a student from Graz and send him or her to Padua or um, Vilnius and um, teach them about German, Austrian uh, language and culture there in, in the schools. And by that means also uh, allowing him or her making her own um, intercultural uh, learning experiences and also um, yeah, getting the European feeling in a way. Um, the second uh, strand of this mobility is uh, the exchange of language assistance at the university level, essentially the same, but only sending them to our partners institutions. Um, the, Last point here on my slide is an online terminological database for terms in higher education. Um, I think this is also a particularly important aspect of our work here. Um, it's essentially about finding a common language. Uh, we use, uh, we identify um, these terms um, and use them uh, or share, uh, create a shared understanding of it really, what, what it really means um, to uh, when we talk about um, institutions or processes in um, teaching or um, university administration. Um, as you can see, uh, these activities are quite diverse, but um, I think the common denominator is that they all serve directly or indirectly uh, for training students for a multilingual and multicultural world. So um, essentially what we do here is um, transposing the idea of um, the common European framework of reference 
um, this, the core of European language policy to uh, the needs and uh, prerequisites of um, higher education. And um, in a way, it's um, a field for experimenting, a field for making new experiences and finding out what works well and um, what still needs improvement. Um, but essentially, it's all about um, the European citizen in a way. Um, here I have a little slide uh, which shows that all um, our activities uh, with regard of multilingualism and plurilingualism are um, cross-sectional. Uh, they are about the students. Uh, they are about the lecturers which, uh, who teach the students and who need uh, particular competences, but it's also about staff who uh, provide the framework which only allows the students to study and uh, lecturers to teach. And all this has uh, a clear impact on society as a whole. So it's really here um, that uh, in the nucleus, um, what we do is that serves um, the whole system of uh, the university and uh, society at large. I will now um, address some of the specific uh, actions we took um, or have taken and uh, also on specific um, challenges uh, we faced. Um, and the first um, complex is physical exchange. Um, when we wrote the proposal, we had the idea of exchanging students, of exchanging um, colleagues, uh, teaching staff. We had the idea of exchanging um, administrative staff um, and so on and, and so on. Um, and of course, um, this uh, was not possible when the whole um, work started in uh, last year. Um, and with regard to mobility, uh, neither uh, the idea of sending students to local schools was possible, nor stu sending students to the partner universities. Uh, we had planned wonderful summer schools, and we also had planned a um, great workshop series for staff development. And um, we also had um, substantial amounts of money in our budget to make these exchanges happen. But um, despite the difficult um, conditions, we were able to uh, refocus. And what we did, what we did is we uh, turned our uh, workshops for students online. Um, we had uh, two summer schools last year, which took place virtually. Um, we um, created a, a new format for intercultural exchange. We call it the language cafe, in the, uh, the Arcus Cafe and the Arcus Lounge. Um, I will give you more information about those two um, events later. And then I will also talk about the workshop series for staff development. As for the workshops with students, we, uh, there were way more. Um, we had, for instance, one um, intensive course on pronunciation. Uh, we had developed uh, German, uh, very short uh, German B1 uh, language course. And uh, we've had a very successful um, academic English series called Before Christmas because all the events took place um, shortly before Christmas. But uh, despite uh, the, the full time of the, the point of time in the year where everybody is busy, uh, we had way more applicants uh, for the workshops than we had places. Um, as for the summer schools, I said they took place uh, in the virtual space. We had uh, a bilateral program in 2020, 
and um, only two of the partners were involved, Leipzig and Granada. We had one group of Spanish learners in Leipzig at the below one level and one uh, course of German learners at uh, Granada, uh, also at um, the B1 level. Um, the two summer courses were kind of independent, but we, they also had common elements. For instance, um, the Spanish um, students met the German students um, in a language tandem. So there was already a kind of exchange. And well, um, as far as I can tell, it was uh, really a success having these um, two summer schools, um, even though we would have preferred to have them physically. But um, our experience shows that uh, they work well also in the digital space. This year, uh, we are trying to expand the program um, a little bit farther. Uh, we will have a summer school in Granada and in Leipzig again, um, also um, on the E1 levels again. And um, this time, uh, Graz joins in with a summer school on stability, security, and happiness. And um, the general idea is that um, every partner university contributes and um, to, the ex uh, to the extent um, the partner contributes, he's also allowed to draw from the resources that are in the pool. So this is a kind of win-win situation. Everyone gives something, everyone takes something, but uh, we have way more perspectives, way more approaches, way more methods. And we have all this in a European context. And I think this is really what makes Arcus Arcus uh, living this idea of Europe and contributing and um, yeah, thinking on a European level in a way. Here is um, a short, just to give you an idea of what happened during the summer schools. Um, the Leipzig summer school um, had the same structure every day. Um, at the beginning, there was an explore, exploring phase, um, which took place online for the whole group. And the idea was to introduce uh, the topics, um, to make students familiar with the learning objectives of the day, um, to give them orientation on uh, what's going to happen during the day, and also to activate prior knowledge and uh, make them uh, reflect on their uh, learning needs, on their learning styles, and so on and so on. Uh, followed by this was the second phase, the training phase, where the students were assigned um, tasks, either individually or in a group, um, and they used the Moodle learning platform for this purpose. Then usually there was uh, the lunch break, and after the lunch break, there was um, the applying phase for the whole group again. Uh, where students re received on feedback on um, the tasks they performed um, before, uh, where results could be discussed or what they, where they could ask um, questions. Um, the final phase is the immersion and exchange phase. Um, we, uh, formally, we called it homework. The idea was is to consolidate uh, the learning results and yeah, also yeah, go on with what happened uh, the day before. Um, on the right hand side, you have um, a little example of one of our um, units. Um, here, um, this unit was quite popular. It was about uh, festivals uh, and students um, were asked to share their experiences with festivals um, to tell what makes them special, how uh, festivals in their own country were. Uh, they were, were asked to plan a tour to a festival um, and to report on uh, their experiences uh, of festivals and so on and so on. 
So um, this is just um, to give you an idea of what really happened during the summer school. I'm now turning to the Arcus Cafe. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, this is, in my perception, uh, a, a form of micro mobility. Um, of course, we were not able to send students to uh, our partner uh, universities, and we asked ourselves how can we uh, promote intercultural and uh, interlingual exchange amongst the students. And here we created these um, Arcus Cafe. Um, you can think of it as um, a virtual space, like a Zoom room, um, moderated by trained tutors. And um, the students are allowed to enter the room and uh, discuss anything uh, which is of interest to them. Um, and in this short period between March uh, last year and um, end of July last year, we've, we had uh, 23 cafes in 15 languages. I think the languages are particularly interesting because they were uh, very rare languages uh, um, there, like Twi and Ga. These are African languages. We had uh, Arabic. The standard version and Levantine. We had Brazilian, we had Portuguese, we had Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Italian, Lithuanian, Norwegian, Russian, Spanish, and Turkish. And um, there were 28 tutors involved. And I think um, not only the students um, who um, took part in the cafes. Uh, uh, benefited from um, this uh, format, but also um, the tutors, because um, of course they um, learn how to direct online sessions, how to give feedback, uh, how to organize uh, those meetings, how to um, deal with um, the technical equipment and so on and so on. So this is really uh, a competence which is relevant to their future professional life or uh, still also uh, for their uh, for their uh, activities in academia and um, my last number here is the number of participants and I'm really very proud that we have had that we have had uh, not that we had 174 participants in these four months uh, which is really a substantial number given the difficult um, circumstances in the corona and the first corona summer semester. So um, the um, Arcus Cafe uh, can really be considered a great success and um, that's why we uh, started um, a second edition uh, this uh, year. Um, it, and it uh, has just started and will go on uh, for um, the next round. Um, we thought, uh, yeah, just to, to wrap it up a little bit, uh, why are these uh, Arcus Cafes um, an interesting thing for students? It's a virtual meeting space, like a forum, an agora. Uh, they are quite flexible. Students don't have to enroll in huge programs. Uh, it, if they feel uh, the need to, they just uh, sign in um, in the online platform and they take part in. If they want to leave, they leave, nothing happens. Um, but uh, usually it, it works very well. Nobody wants to leave because it's um, a great uh, benefit for them um, to exchange with um, students from uh, the partner universities and um, there are very uh, limited um, options um, where can um, get in touch with their fellow students. Um, of course it's a low threshold, it is informal, um, it's an open atmosphere, it's a welcoming atmosphere, it's uh, the, uh, the European the Arcus spirit um, 
which is uh, guiding uh, the whole interaction in the art escape phase. Um, students can also participate in different language cafes uh, wherever they like. And um, I think the Arcus Cafe can also be considered a means for the integration of international students. And um, I think it's not um, difficult to understand why we believe that uh, the Arcus Cafe is uh, really uh, prototypical for um, our, it's not only a wish, it's our um, foremost um, intention to uh, foster and promote multilingualism. And um, as I was saying, it's working really well. Um, here is uh, a little bit of feedback we received on uh, the Arcus Cafe. Students said, thanks to the language cafe, I've been able to use and improve my language skills on a regular basis in order not to forget what you have learned. Another one said, <clears throat> I enjoyed the casual and relaxed atmosphere and the focus on actually speaking the language. In addition, you can suggest topics for the discussed. This always keeps things exciting as you get to know different people from a variety of countries. Still another one said, in addition, you can meet a great students from different countries and get to know each other, thus experiencing completely new perspectives and opinions. Or I would recommend to other students because I think it's one of the best ways to improve the hardest part of a language, speaking, focus on speaking here. There's no better way of learning a language than communicating with fellow colleagues. It's a great way to improve speaking. I met many people from all over the world who willingly speak Spanish and each of them have different experiences. I, it gave a lot. So maybe uh, you're curious now yourself and maybe you want to take part in one of the cafes. And of course, uh, you're more than welcome to be part of this experience. Um, we also have the perspective of the language tutors. They said participants were often curious about themes of culture and language comparison, for instance, vocabulary traditions, which also encouraged a nice collective conversation. Book and film recommendations have also been a recurring topic. Obviously, um, culture is also involved in these cafes. Another one said, in specific cases, a few participants asked both linguistics and practical questions regarding Italian language country log logistics. Tutors were happy to help. Um, another one said, I felt ready to start managing the cafe. Yes, I also appreciate this constant support offered from the Tandem Bureau in the person of Mr. Lima. Um, Fabiana de Lima is our um, uh, coordinator of uh, the Arcus Cafe here in Leipzig, and obviously she does a great job. Thanks for that, Fabiana. Um, of course, uh, also some difficulties occurred. Um, once um, Tutor uh, complained about the internet connection, um, but uh, this is something we all know from our video conferences. Um, difficulties in connection may occur, but um, finally um, it works out. Another benefit is exchange with other Arcus language to this can positively add to one's personal knowledge and experience. I think that's one of the aspects I had mentioned before. Um, because um, the Arcus Cafe uh, went really well, we thought about opening um, this format, not only to students, but also to staff. Um, it's a little bit of the uh, idea of Erasmus. And that's why um, we are planning to have an intercultural exchange for staff, and we don't call it Arcus Cafe, we call it um, Language Lounge. Sounds a little bit more like luxury. Um, and here we want to bring uh, colleagues together from the partner universities 
and uh, share their experiences, make them talk, talk about their work, about the uh, problems or issues they encounter in their work and how they uh, resolve those um, issues and so on. So it's more um, centered about topics and um, usually uh, English will be used um, as a language. It's not so much uh, learning the language with, which is at the focus here, but more than more um, learning about the other universities and um, procedures at the universities or how um, problems are resolved. Uh, it's essentially a uh, network building. And the next uh, Arcus Lounge will take, uh, is, is uh, being organized by the University of Lyon and um, addresses um, topics related to outgoing mobility, sharing best practices. And we expect um, mainly to uh, um, the staff of international offices to uh, take part in the Arcus Lounge, but of course, um, everyone is welcome to participate and to contribute. Um, I'm now coming to the goals we have achieved in 2020. And um, in 2020, we have had more than 300 participants in Action Line 4. We provided more than 2,000 hours of instruction. So this is substantial, I would say. Um, we um, provided guided learning and we developed a lot of uh, materials um, for um, additional learning, um, especially in the context of the summer school, but also in the context of the workshops we provided. Uh, if you have a look um, to the universities who participated, we see a little bit of uneven distribution, um, uh, especially Vilnius, Leipzig and Padua have been active in our uh, exchange programs, whereas um, other universities have been a little bit less active. And uh, we hope for the second half of um, the Arcus Alliance uh, project um, that um, the numbers will get a little bit more evenly distributed. Here, um, I will give you some uh, qualitative feedback on various aspects of our goals to make it a little bit more um, hands on. Um, the first feedback uh, refers to our workshop on teaching pronunciation. Uh, here, a participant said, I found the workshop very helpful, especially the tips and when all tried the exercises for practicing new sounds. I also found the incorporation of media very successful. It has given me plenty of inspiration for my own course. So it's not only a good course, but um, also an added value in um, the European context because um, this workshop was delivered by Leipzig and could be taken by students uh, from or by participants from uh, the other partners. Um, the second feedback refers to um, the English teach uh, English medium of instruction workshop delivered by grads. I enjoyed much the course and learned plenty of useful things. I'm very glad that I had participated and would like to thank you again for giving me the opportunity to join the workshop. Uh, we also had a teaching in English workshop in Leipzig. Here, the feedback is we are grateful to you for providing this opportunity for us and we would like to continue this collaboration further. Then the fourth uh, relates to the summer school uh, between Leipzig and Granada. I feel that in a short time, I've improved my language skills a lot. The classes were very dynamic and entertaining. So in spite of the many hours spent, they passed quickly. The teachers were very good. I'm very happy with all of them. Um, the Arcus Cafe, another voice, um, it was 
great experience and I learned a lot. I'm also really looking forward to the Russian session tomorrow. And uh, the day of teaching and learning that was um, an event uh, organized by the University of Leipzig on the occasion of uh, the uh, anniversary of um, our university, uh, which uh, takes place uh, on December the 2nd every year. Um, it became clear in the subsequent discussions that ARCUS can offer an important exchange platform and opportunity for synergies and joint projects, especially in the current crisis situation. So I think both um, the numbers I've shown and all the various uh, qualitative feedback uh, really shows um, that we have been quite successful in um, fostering and uh, promoting a multilingual environment, which is um, conducive to increase um, the uh, linguistic and cultural competence of both students, instructors, and staff. Um, I mentioned before uh, that all the partners have uh, a number of, uh, or a large number of uh, language courses. And um, one of our activities in the last year was um, to find out exactly which courses there are and uh, which of those courses are open to other uh, Arcus partners. And I think it's an impressive number to have those 400 and 54 um, courses, um, among them 391 language courses and 100, 138 intercultural courses. And 352 of them are open to ARCUS students. So um, three quarters um, can be shared. I think that is really Good news and really good news is also um, the languages taught, 42 languages. I think this is really Europe. Um, so here I'm um, almost um, at the end of my presentation. I hope um, that I could give you um, a little overview of um, the various activities that took place, that has, have taken place in the context of Action Line for the Multilingual and Pluricultural University. I hope that I could also show uh, that uh, there are really some um, good um, approaches in achieving the goals. I could also show that uh, we have um, achieved many of our goals, um, partly also overachieved the goals. The numbers are higher than we promised in the proposal. Um, of course, there are still some things uh, we have to address and problems we have to solve. But at the end of the day, um, we're on a very good way. Uh, I would like to say and um, I would um, also like to thank all the wonderful colleagues who have uh, contributed to Action Line 4. I uh, particularly want to thank the coordinator of uh, Action Line 4, Jupp Möhring, who is always um, in, um, in charge of um, um, replying to emails and organizing our various uh, events. He's been very active in uh, working on the language policy. Uh, he also um, did a great job in, um, um, in, in planning and, and uh, preparing materials uh, for the Arcus Academy Week. So uh, thank you so much uh, for all uh, you did um, and a great deal of our success here is yours. And um, let me also thank um, our wonderful uh, colleagues in the partner universities. Um, every partner university is the lead of one of the uh, work packages. So um, the responsibility is um, shared among um, the partners. And I think this is really um, a great model for cooperation 
in Europe amongst institutions of higher education and um, which shows how um, how uh, great we can proceed, which great progress we can make if we collaborate and share resources. Thank you so much. And I would now like to open the floor for further discussion or questions or whatever you deem interesting. Is there anyone who wants to share something? Can you hear me still? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. I never participated in Arcus Cafe, but uh, I think I will try because it is uh, really interesting and I think it will help me to de develop my um, language skills. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Seems like everything is pretty clear. If there are not any other remarks, um, we can conclude the session and enjoy a lovely Monday afternoon. Your last chance to contribute. Uh, okay, thank you all of you for joining. Uh, thank you uh, for um, listening and uh, I wish you many other interesting workshops during the Arcus um, Academy Week and I'm sure uh, you'll receive a lot of more interesting input. Have a great afternoon, have a great evening and see you in this or another context. Bye.